Hey, it's Amy with A Farmer's Kind of Life. Today we're talking about my barn and how it is empty right now. That's right, besides barn cats and dogs, there are no animals on this farm. What happened? I'll tell ya. Today we're going to be talking about what happens when you need to take a break or you need to essentially start over as a homesteader. And there's a lot of different reasons that this can happen. You can have a disaster on your farm, you can have issues with finances, you can just be at a point where you're like, we need to do something else. There's a lot of different reasons that this happens and I think it's important to bring it up because not a lot of people talk about this. And it's important in the homesteading community to be really honest about the stuff that can happen on this journey. And so that's what I'm going to talk about today because it's okay to talk about it. I didn't make a big point to publicize this uh, late last fall when we did this, um, fall 2019. Um, but we actually elected to butcher all the farm animals that we had on the farm in the fall. Normally we would butcher the pigs and the meat birds and the turkeys, obviously, because we only, we get those in the spring, we raise them up, we butcher in the fall. But normally we would be overwintering ducks and our egg birds. And we made the decision to uh, get rid of everything. And there's a reason for that. Now the reason we made the decision had uh, to do with, um, number one, switching up what we're going to have on the farm and number two, finances. So regarding ducks, um, previously we've raised Pekin ducks and we had made the decision that we're gonna switch to Muscovies. Um, Pekins are great, they're wonderful, but we never had a lot of luck with um, incubating their eggs. Pekins aren't known for being really good setters, at least they weren't here, and so in order for us to you know, continue to have them and not continue to buy chicks from um, a breeder or a hatchery, um, we had to incubate our own eggs, which is fine. I love incubating eggs. I love that whole process. We have tons of incubators here that we have built and I love using them, but incubating ducks wasn't quite as successful as I wanted it to be. And so someone had told us about Muscovies and they're like, they're really good setters, they're really good moms. Switch to that breed of duck and you know it's probably going to turn out better for you. So when fall came, and we are raising pecans for meat, so obviously they're here to butcher. We do, you know, have their eggs as well. But um, we had decided, you know, if we're planning to switch breeds in the spring, then why would we continue to feed them over the winter? We might as well just butcher everything now and not have to deal with them in the winter, knowing we were going to replace all of them in the winter anyway. Does that make sense? It was a similar story um, with the the egg birds. Um, a couple years ago, we had replaced our entire flock um, because we were having issues with the flock. It was a really, really old flock. It was, yeah, it, it was time to be replaced. And so we had decided we were gonna do Brahmas. I was enthralled, you know, with the largeness of them and the fluffy feet and all of that. And so we had switched to Brahmas. And that was gonna be wonderful, except that um, it wasn't, I don't know that it's specifically the breed that didn't work for us. I think it was the particular batch that we got. Things started off really rough with them. We had our first run in with Coccidia with them and it just kind of seemed like they never really got going. They weren't sick, but um, they didn't, they never really laid a lot of eggs for us. They weren't reliable um, in the peak of their production. I mean, we had 12 hens here and we were getting three eggs a week. That's not okay. So we decided that uh, in the spring, so spring of 2020, we would replace the Brahmas and uh, we would go back to old reliables. Um, we've had many, many breeds of chickens here over the years. And so, um, you know, thinking, wait a second, if we want eggs, we really need to have, you know, a reliable breed um, that we can depend on. And so same thing as with the ducks. Why would we continue to keep them over the winter and feed them um, if we knew we were going to replace all of those in the spring? So... With that decision, that meant there were no farm animals on our farm all winter. So how did I feel about that? I will say it was really nice to not have a ton of winter chores to do here. Um, you know, not having to chip ice out and deal with frozen stuff and, you know, I mean, that, that was very nice. Um, 
but there were other things um, that were nice and there were also things I didn't like and I'll get to those um, things that I liked I felt like we really had time to assess our farm I'm one of those people where not having any animals on the farm it really gave me the brain space to be able to say okay what are we doing here we've been on the farm since 2011 and sometimes I feel like you can almost get on a hamster wheel kind of and you you move to a farm and you have all these plans and you, you sometimes fail to step back and go okay are we on the right path are we doing the next thing just because we thought that was the next thing is it really the best next thing to do or you know do we need to change up what we're doing here so it gave me a little bit of time to assess that it gave me some time to like go back to the drawing board and say you know almost like what are, what are some things that need to be changed here what needs to be fixed what needs to be moved what needs to be modified what are some things we've been doing that you know, we haven't had the time, we haven't had the brain space, we haven't been able to sit down and think, okay, how can we do this better? How can we fix this? Because there's all these animals on the farm and then we have to deal with having the animals on the farm while we're trying to fix that or change that or, you know, whatever. Not having the farm animals, I feel like just has given us a lot of space to be able to figure out a lot of things. And so that has actually been a benefit that I, I wasn't even planning on that, having, you know, the last... I don't know, four months of, you know, not having any animals to worry about on the farm. Um, as far as what I didn't like about it, it made me feel a little bit crazy, I'll be honest. Um, being on the farm and not having any farm, farm animals, all I could think about is when I'm going to get those animals back. When am I going to get baby chicks? When am I, when am I going to get the pigs? When, you know, what kind of turkey should I get this year? And, and I think we do that every year. Um, but one of the good things, going back to another positive, I would say, is that um, it, it, it almost reignites your love of homesteading. And that's not to say that I don't love homesteading, but I think sometimes you can get into such a cycle of, you know, this is what we're doing and it's another day and okay. And you almost start to take things for granted. And um, when you do it for a while, sometimes just the way you look at it can change and so I feel like the last four months with not having any farm animals has really reignited my passion for homesteading and just you know helped me to think about okay this is why we're here on the farm this is what I want to do um this is our our plan and our direction and and I just I feel really good about that now Another thing that's been kind of weird about not having any farm animals on the farm for the last few months is that you almost start to feel a little bit like a fake. I'm not someone who's super married to the term homesteader and I've, I've talked about that in various places about how some people are, are very attached to the homesteader label and are very rigid about what that means. Um, and so I'm, I'm not super attached to that. I'd, Defining what a homesteader is in 2020 is is really difficult. I think um, Because really very 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 few of us are actually homesteading like the original homesteaders were so um, I'm, I'm not super married to the term But I will say as someone who has always had farm animals on her farm And even before we lived here at the farm the property we were on before we lived here for a couple years. We had chickens um, and so not having that right now and then being in the season of everything's covered with snow and so I'm I'm not growing anything and I'm not raising anything that's providing you know for a freezer it can play some some tricks on your brain and make you feel a little bit like an imposter or like a fake and I know that's not true but um it's it's weird like when you have this season of not having a lot of stuff on your farm or on your homestead, not doing a lot of stuff on your homestead, you realize how connected you are to your homestead. And then when you sort of lose that connection or that, that activity and that constant, you know, like I'm growing stuff and I'm raising stuff and I have all these chores and all of that, it, it, it's really kind of strange. It, it um, makes you kind of, kind of question what's going on a little bit so it can play some tricks with your brain. It's not awesome. So there you go. Now you know. No uh, animals on the farm right now except for barn cats and crazy dogs, but we're going to change that shortly here in the next couple of months. Super excited. And I got to tell y'all, 
look what I got. I went to our uh, our local feed store and look what they had. Get ready. That's a chick catalog. Which I guess you're actually supposed to call like a hatchery catalog or like a catalog from the hatchery because when you go to church and you tell people you're super excited because you got the chick catalog. If they're not farmers, they don't really know what you're talking about. So in my next video, I'm going to be talking about some of the super cool stuff that I hope we're going to do on the farm this year. Some different uh, animals we're going to get and just some different projects that I am planning to take on. I should say I hope we're going to take them on because, you know, it's always fun to make plans and then you get into the year and you're like, oh, wait a second, we don't have time to do all those things. But uh, it's fun to make plans and so I'm going to make a little video about some of the things that we're planning to do. So I'm super excited. Check that out. Remember to click subscribe and so uh, you can be following all this great stuff that we're putting out. And remember to click the little dingy bell so you will be notified when there's a new video out. I'm going to go check out this chick catalog and figure out what I'm going to order. I'm super, super excited. Thanks for hanging out today. <clears throat> um, chickens. I'm pretty sure I just saw a cat that's not supposed to be in our barn. Inside the chicken bacon ranch. Um, I don't know what I'm going to say. I should figure out what I'm going to say before I start the camera. Hanging out with me today if you want more videos, more vlogs, more... <laughs> I'm supposed to be videoing right now, but Scratch, the cat that doesn't let anybody touch her, is actually out right now, and she's eating, and I'm super excited, so I don't know if I should like try to touch her, or that's going to be like getting my death on camera, because she, one time I tried to pick her up, and she like, I'm surprised I have skin left. It's, it's pretty crazy. Let me see if I can turn the camera on here. Scratch! Not, not you. Scratch, back there. Hi, Scratch. Scratch, can I pet you? Hi, Scratch. Hi. Oh my gosh, we're petting, and we're loving, and we are petting friends. Hi. There she is. You're on camera. You're famous. 